Intro to Addition Reactions In many ways, an addition reaction is like the reverse of an elimination reaction. An elimination reaction reacts an alkyl halide, for instance, with a base to get an alkene. An addition reaction reacts an alkene with some reagent that has two components to get a substituted alkane. So in an addition reaction, what happens is, in the substrate, each of the sp2 hybridized carbons has three sigma bonds and one pi bond. If we get rid of that pi bond, then each one needs a fourth bond and will replace it with the sigma bond to each component of the reagent. This provides a variety of stereochemical and regiochemical outcomes. So here's one regiochemical outcome, where the X component of the reagent added to the more substituted carbon of the alkene, and the Y component added to the less substituted part. We could also have the opposite regiochemical result, where the Y ends up in the more substituted position and the X ends up in the less substituted. In addition to these regiochemical possibilities, which of the two sp2 carbons does each component of the reagent end up on, we also have stereochemical possibilities, two of them, either syn or anti. So, the substrate, the alkene, is planar with every carbon involved, or every atom involved, with these sp2 carbons. So this methyl group, this methyl group, and this methyl group, and this hydrogen, and the two sp2 carbons are all in the same plane. Now, the reagent can attack from above the plane or below the plane. And furthermore, the reagent can be, or one component can add above and the other below, or they can both add to the same side. So let's say both of these added to the same side. Then I could make both of the bonds between the formerly sp2 carbon and the components of the reagent on a wedge. That's called syn. That's one stereochemical possibility. And then the other stereochemical possibility is anti. So in anti-addition, if x adds on a wedge, then y adds on a dash. So here are two anti-addition possibilities, right? So this is the stereochemical outcomes. Does this represent all possible outcomes? No, it doesn't. We could have Y on the more substituted on a dash and X on the less substituted on a dash. That would be sin. That would mean this methyl group is on a wedge. Or we could put X on the more substituted on a dash and Y on the more or the less substituted on a dash and then change this methyl group to a wedge. That would also be sin. So there's two more sin possibilities and there's two more anti-possibilities. That's eight possibilities in all. Luckily, depending on the type of addition reaction, things are less complicated. Certain reagents will react according to patterns. So don't worry, usually there will only be two outcomes for each reagent, usually. Let's look at the thermodynamics of addition versus elimination, since one is the reverse of the other. So I've got my alkene substrate, 
plus my reagent, which has two components, at the very least two atoms, or it could be two groups, and I get my addition product, in this case a di-substituted alkane. So the above pathway is addition, and the reverse reaction is elimination. So thermodynamics should make you think of the delta G equation, which is delta H minus T delta S. Now, in general, delta H is related to the bond strength, and delta S is related to the number of particles. We can see we've got two molecules on the left-hand side, and only one molecule on the right. That means that the delta S is negative. Entropy disfavors addition, which is the forward process. What about delta H? Well, we have one, two, three, four, five sigma bonds and one pi bond. On the left hand side, on the right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six sigma bonds. In general, sigma bonds are stronger than pi bonds. That means that delta H in the forward direction is negative. So enthalpy favors the reaction. At low temperature, therefore, addition is favored. At high temperature, elimination is favored. Remember acid catalyzed dehydration? If I take an alcohol and I heat it with sulfuric acid, I get an alkene and water. So, say my alcohol is 2-methyl-butane-2-all, shown here. Here's my concentrated sulfuric acid, concentrated with the square bracket shorthand, and then the delta represents heat. This will give me 2-methyl-bute-2-ene, an alkene, and water. Now, the reverse reaction, if I do this at relatively low temperature in relatively non-concentrated sulfuric acid, so we just say H2SO4, and we've got the water, I get the alcohol back. That's an addition reaction. Now, look at this. Let's say that the hydroxyl group represents Y, and the hydrogen represents X. Now my reagent has two components, and look, the alkane, the di-substituted alkane that I get, has an X, and we've also got the hydrogen added in the beta position. So, because entropy disfavors addition, we do the addition at low temperature. But because entropy favors elimination, we do the acid-catalyzed dehydration at high temperature. And what do you think we call this addition reaction? We call it acid-catalyzed hydration. Acid-catalyzed hydration has specific regiochemistry and stereochemistry. Note how I put the hydroxyl group on the more substituted of the sp2 carbons. That's called Markovnikov regiochemistry. Acid-catalyzed hydration is regioselective in that the major product is always Markovnikov, with the hydroxyl group going in the more substituted position and the hydrogen going in the less. However, it goes through a carbocation intermediate, which is planar. So the stereochemistry is not selective. It can be either syn or anti-addition. 
We'll talk more about it later.